following on from my video about remote recording and the processes involved, here is an answer to a question posed by Glenn K on my video about sending logic files. How do you send them to other people who may be using different uh, audio systems like Cubase or FL Studio or Ableton or whatever it is they're using? Well, I've got a tune open here on the computer and you can see on the screen there's lots of audio files. And uh, I'm going to go through the process by which we export these. Now, first of all, rule 1A, be really strict with your file naming system. Your tracks, as you can see there, they're all labelled Skank Guitar, Guitar Solo, Lead Vocals, channel, Chorus, Backing Vocal 1, all that sort of thing. Makes a massive difference the other end, especially when you've got quite a few tracks like this for the engineer to sift through. Now, also at the beginning, we've just got to make sure that there is enough space at the start so that it, no files are cut off accidentally. That can happen if you bounce from bar one or export from bar one. If there's anything at that actual bar line, it might be clipped ever so slightly. So be careful with that. I tend to start projects a bar or two. Uh, depends you know, what I'm doing, really. It depends if there's an intro that I need to put in or indeed just to make it easier for other people to record. So everything at the moment starts at bar two. You can see that my bass and the guitars, they start ever so slightly before that because I've got the sort of the little lead in of the beginning of the plucking of the string. So it just gives a more natural intro. Now, at the moment, the song runs uh, for 90, 83 bars. There we go. But there's a load of space after it. Quite a lot of space. And at the end, at the top right here, you can see that there's an arrow which indicates that's the length of the project. Now, ideally, we need to make that smaller because if you export files, you'll be exporting the whole file there. So there's going to be almost half of it silence. You don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that arrow in here to, you know, a few bars afterwards. Don't drag it right to the end. If you do export with any reverbs, which ideally you shouldn't do, but if you do, and you don't export, um, you don't uh, bring that line uh, um, far enough to the right, you can actually cut the reverb off and you don't want that at all. So I'm just gonna leave it slightly afterwards like that. Now I've got all my tracks there, all my backing vocal takes and all of that sort of stuff. So I'll just play you a short snippet of it so you can hear kind of what I'm doing. I think I showed this once um, before with the plugins as well. Now, at the top, we have File and Export. Now, if I go to All Tracks as Audio Files, it is worth learning the key commands. What I sometimes do is if I'm looking for something and it's got a key command attached to it, I'll try and remember it, click off, and then actually perform that same operation like uh, on, the, on the keyboard. And it brings up this page, which gives you uh, quite a few options. Now, We've got a few things here. Trim silence at file end. That's really what I want to do. Um, actually, no, no, I want to extend the file length to a project end. I do beg your pardon. I'd set that before and for some reason it defaults back to the other one. I want to extend the file length all the way to the end of what I specified just now, just to make sure it's all completely clean and unencumbered by any sort of thinking it knows what it's doing best things. Um, export cycle range only. You could you could literally just select a, a few bars at the top and export that. So I'm going to go project end. Now, save format. This is where people go oh, all these things. I've never been asked for anything other than a WAV file. Now, the WAV file, uh, the, the system was designed by Microsoft, so it's actually more akin to PC. And don't forget, we've got Apple and PC working together in the recording studio. AIFF, um, Audio Interchange File Format. It's a, a sort of Apple format which was designed really to work with, it's essentially the same as a WAV file in terms of its quality, but it contains other information as well, like sort of the notes or the key or the tempo, for example. That might be useful. I'll just use WAVE. CAF, Core Audio File, uh, Core Audio Format. Basically, what that means is that you can have, um, the WAV file is restricted to four gigabytes. That's quite a lot, that's several hours of, um, of audio. But bear in mind, if you increase the sample rate, 
that file length will, of course, diminish because four gigabytes would then be used in half of that time. So um, I'd just go for WAVE. Uh, bit depth, most people want 24-bit. You know, you can, you can actually uh, specify that uh, file quality 8-bit. I mean, you know, nobody uses that anymore. 16-bit is the standard uh, CD uh, format, 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit. So there we go. Now, it doesn't give you the option to set the sample rate. So you do have to work with your engineer, work with the person that you're collaborating with or exporting to, saying these are at 44.1 kilohertz. Some files, uh, file uh, systems and some digital audio workstations will actually open it up and recognize the sample rate and change it accordingly, but some do not. So if you end up with something that is a semitone sharp and plays 10% faster, what's actually happened is that the person the other end is using 48 kilohertz when you've sent 44. And the other, the opposite is also true. If you send 48 to a 44 machine, your files will play back 10% slower and a semitone flat. And it quickly becomes obvious when that's a problem. Uh, so bypass effect plugins. This is a very useful box. It means you don't have to go through all the channels and switch your effects off. The engineer may say, I want the vocals completely dry so that I can apply my own compression or I can put it through an 1176 or whatever it is they want to do uh, or own reverbs. So by default, I would actually bypass those effect plugins. I would just do that and send them like that. Include volume and pan automation. Again, the engineer may say, I want to do my own fade at the end. So you can actually uh, opt to leave that box unchecked. Uh, normalize. Ideally, I would never normalize anything before sending to an engineer. If anything, I would opt to send the engineer something like, you know, something that peaks at maybe minus six, just so that there's room for them to play with EQ or compression or anything like that. So you can actually set normalize off overload protection only. It basically just stops anything distorting. You may opt to keep that on. If you do that, overload protection only, it doesn't actually normalize anything. It simply rounds off anything that's too loud. But you really want to try and get your files so that they are they never get there. Add resulting files to project browser. It just means you can add them to your own file. Now, when you click export, the thing will simply put all of the tracks into a nice neat folder that then you can send off to your engineer completely trouble free.